YouTube friends. Welcome back. Melissa here with Be and Cozy Stitching. And today I thought we could have a conversation on making quilt labels. Now, quilt labels, they're disappointing when you buy that special quilt or you get handed down a special quilt from a relative and there's no signature on it and no one can remember who made it. It's just kind of disappointing because it would be really nice to know who made it, how long ago, why did you make it, well, what's the name of that pattern? You know, the usual questions that we have. Um, it seems that women in history don't really were too humble. They didn't think that their everyday quilts or their special quilts were worth signing or putting a signature on. And it, it really causes kind of a problem in our industry, um, both for providing provenance, dating. Now, appraisals, that's kind of touch and go. Appraisers have gotten so smart, they are able to tell you what year certain fabrics were made and they can give you an idea of when that quilt, you know, how old they think it is or, you know, from what time frame it was made. It gives them kind of an idea, but you know, when you're a scrap person like me that gets tons and tons of hand-me-downs, I might have fabrics from the 70s, but I don't put it together until now. And so that makes the job for the appraiser that much harder and it makes historians jobs harder. It, it, it's an important thing to label your quilts, to leave a historical trail and to celebrate our quilting. Now I did come across in my research a very interesting um, article statement and I would like to tell you, but I'm gonna have to read it though because it's written funky and I'm not real good with older older English. Is that a good way to say it? Anyway, um, you know, the earliest signatures date back to the 1600s, but those primarily stayed on needlework and samplers. And usually they only contain the maker's initials. And it's kind of funny because I think about that all the time and I think, hmm, I wonder if that's where all this monogramming came from, was from our earlier ancestors just putting their initials on things that they make. But anyway, in 1878, the useful companion related, it should be borne to mind that too many frequent washings is liable to wear out linen more than ordinary use, and therefore the process should not be repeated oftener than is absolutely necessary. It will also be found an excellent plan to have every article numbered and initialed and so arranged after washing that each worn in its regular turn and accomplished its proper term of domestic use. Well, by the 1900s, it was becoming more and more popular to find quilts and linens and embroideries and uh, domestic items initialed or labeled or named. And perhaps this had something to do with that. Um, we can only guess, but I find it kind of interesting that this article came out to teach the homemaker how to rotate their linens and that way they would wear evenly and their suggestion was to initial and date and name and all that good stuff um, and we've kind of adapted that now some of the other numbering and labeling of the quilts came from young ladies who were making quilts for their wedding and they would number how many quilts that they've made for their wedding. But, you know, it gets kind of tricky because those numbers don't necessarily mean how many. So, say for example, if you found a quilt with the number 15 on it. Now, it could mean that it's number 15 and that young woman's um, list of quilts that she's made so far. It can mean that it was made in the year 15. It can also mean that the quilt maker herself was 15 years of age. 
So it gets kind of, it's kind of a gray area if we could come up with a consistent method to get this done. And I think we've made big leaps and strides towards that now. Um, but you know, even putting your name on the quilt, that's kind of misleading because is the name on there to mark the person that owns the quilt? Or is the name on there to mark who made the quilt? Makes it kind of difficult. We never really will know which is which. So with that said, if we're going to make a label, and you can see I've got just a myriad of stuff on the table, and I'm sure you're all wondering, what is all this stuff for? Well, I'm going to show you. <laughs> but what do we really need on a label? Well, we need to have a name. I know you really can't see that too well, but this is my little sample label here. And you need to have a name on there. You need to have a date that the quilt was made. If you've got the name of the quilt, like if it's a certain pattern or type or block or what have you, you could include that as well on there. You can include who the quilt is for if there's an occasion, what the occasion would be, any special comments that you want to make or special thoughts you want to give to the recipient of the quilt. And, you know, at that point, you could put care and cleaning instructions on there if you wanted to. A label really is a personal touch from the giver to the givee, if that makes sense. So your label can be as personalized as you want it to be, or as bland and boring if you want it to be. Or you can just take a uh, Pigma pen, or you can take a gel roller for fabric, or you can take a Sharpie. They tend to bleed a little bit more than the other ones. There are archival um, ink pens, that you can use to write, Fabrico is one of them, that you can use to write on directly on the quilt. And this works great if the quilts are light colored. You can just put your name and the date right on there if that's what you wanna do. The problem lies when you use darker fabrics because then these are not going to show up very well. So you're going to need to know how, in fact, to make a label for yourself. So, what I'd like to show you next is a very, very broad, simple method for making yourself a quilt label. Yes, you can use technology. Yes, you can use art. Yes, you can color like you did in kindergarten and color outside of the lines and have a good time if you want to. Again, it's personal. You can put as much on it or as little on it as you would like. You can add embellishments. And I think I'm gonna bring you closer so that you can see more of this stuff. Okay, so now you guys are way closer. And that's a good thing because then we can see up close and personal some of these really fun things that I have on here. So when you're very first starting out making a label, the first thing you need in your repertoire is a little bit of freezer paper. Now, freezer paper can be found at Walmart, at grocery stores, anywhere that they would have tin foil, waxed paper, parchment paper, any of those kind of things. So that can be found pretty much anywhere. Now, freezer paper has both a waxy side and a paper side. And it's important that you know that. I don't think you're really going to be able to see that on camera. Maybe some shine, but I really don't think we're going to be able to show you the difference between the two. Just trust me, when you get your freezer paper, you're going to see that there is both a waxy side and then a paper side. And then what you're going to need is some muslin, some light colored fabrics, no shepherd glitter, that's optional. Uh, you're going to want a lighter colored fabric 
without a whole lot of pattern or print to it because you want to be able to write on top of it without having a whole lot of obstructions. So then the next thing that we do, once we have our piece of muslin, is we put our freezer paper to the back of our muslin. Now it's a really good idea, and I say muslin, but you can use whatever fabric that you've picked out, that you've tested, you can write on it, it looks good, it doesn't matter. But for our sample purposes, I'm going to use muslin. Um, you're gonna wanna press it really, really well, because if there's a lot of wrinkles or crinkles to it, they're going to end up in the final product and it just looks a whole lot nicer if you press it nice and flat. Then take the waxy side, the shiny side of your freezer paper and put it to the back side of your fabric. Once you have that laid on top of that, you're gonna take your iron, any iron will do, and you're going to press. And you can lift and press, lift and press, lift and press, or you can slide it back and forth. It really doesn't matter, but what you really want are for the edges to seal really, really well. Once you have these all sealed up and ready to go, if you cut them paper size, then you can put them in your printer tray and you'll have to figure out which way they need to lay in order for the printer to actually write on the fabric and not the freezer paper but refer to your manual for that one because everybody's is different so I wouldn't begin to even know. The one thing you do need to know is your printer needs to be able to print pictures. So what that means is if it prints pictures it's usually a bubble jet printer. If it's usually just used for black and white copy that's a laser printer. Businesses would probably use those more than the average person. You want to make sure you have a bubble jet printer, not an inkjet printer, because the inkjet printer runs too hot and this process will not be pretty. I promise you I've tried it. So if you use a bubble jet printer, it's really super easy for you to make a label because you can put all the information in your computer, you can add color, you can do the whole nine yards and then just hit print and it'll slide through and it'll come out and it'll be just absolutely perfect. Absolutely perfect. Now, you need to let the printer ink that comes out onto this fabric sit for about a week and then you need to heat set it with an iron. That's to make sure that you don't have a ton of fading. You don't want everything you printed on there to go away. You want to set that color so that it stays. And you do that by putting a press cloth over the top of your project and then ironing across the top of your project. Heat it up good. I mean, give it a really good workout. And then let it cool off and you're ready to use it in whatever manner you choose. Now, the label itself. The most common way to attach a label is to press under a quarter of an inch all the way around and then to place it on your quilt and hand stitch it all the way around. Or if you want to save a little time and a little effort, you can place this label in the corner of the quilt and sew it down when you add the binding and that way two sides of the quilt itself are secured by the sewing that was used to attach your binding. And then you just have to sew or sew down the two sides that are loose. So that's an option for you. Um, and it makes the job a little easier, makes the label a little more secure than to do it by hand. Do you put the label on before you send it to the quilter or after? That's personal preference and that's it. If you would like to have 
extra security knowing that label is going to stay with that quilt. You need to attach that label before you send it to your quilter or before you personally quilt your quilt. So that way the quilting stitches will go right through the label just like the rest of the quilt. If you don't like that look and you don't want quilting to go through your label, then you need to add your label after the quilt is finished. The other option you have for adding a label is putting it in the corner. Now, how do you do that? Well, that one's even easier than the last one we did because what you're doing is you're taking a square of fabric I had it pinned in here because I didn't want to lose it because I'm really good at losing things. So you're going to take a square of fabric and you're going to fold it in half. And where you folded it, that's the outside edge and the raw edges you put into the corner of the quilt and you sew it or attach it when you add your binding. And that way when you tack your binding down, it's secured on both sides. You can either leave this open as a little pocket and put a little note or a little candy or something special to you and the recipient, or you can come along here and you can hand stitch this down so that it's nice and secure on that end as well. That's my suggestions for putting in your label. Now, once you have your label done, it's a perfect time to add some embellishments. You can add embroidery stitches. Um, I'm not real good at hand stitching yet, but I'm learning. You can add those embroidery stitches along here to seal that on. You can add embroidery onto your label so you can add something special, maybe put a flower or two on there, whatever you choose, whatever you would like. It's just a simple process of using simple embroidery thread and the right correct size needle and stitching out whatever pattern you would like on there. But it really adds a personal touch to the project that you're doing. Now you can always add buttons. And I will show you on our sample one uh, some of the ways in which you could use some buttons. Just to give you some ideas, you can also use Sharpie pens to add color. You can also use crayons to add color. Now, I highly recommend that if you're gonna use crayons, you either use Crayola crayons or you go to an art supply store and get a real crayon because the dye to wax ratio is much, much higher. And what I mean by that is that when you go to melt away the wax from the crayon, if you're using a very inexpensive brand, usually there's not a lot of color. There's more wax than there is color dye. If you're using Crayola or an artist crayon, you're going to have way more dye compared to the wax so that all that work you've done to color everything in is going to stay and look really, really nice. Now you can also use um, Pigma pens. They come in a variety of colors. Uh, they also come in a variety of I don't know what to call this, the little heads in how wide or thin. You can get extremely detailed with the tiny ones. You can get wider spaces with the wider ones. I think you can even get chiseled ones if you so choose. I mean, it's limitless, the stuff that you can use. It really is limitless. The other thing that you can use are what they call dye pens. They're made by Fabrico, they're acid free. They're usually what's called a dual marker. They'll have a brush on one side so you can paint and they'll have a sharp point on the other side so that you can do fine details. But the nice thing about it is because it's dye, it, the color's going to last. All of these things need to be heat set 
the process is super, super, super simple. It's just like I told you. You're going to take a press cloth and put it over the top of your label and you're going to add heat. You add heat with your iron and you give it a really, really good press. Heat it up good. Get it good and hot. And then you're good to go. You can go ahead and use it just like you would use anything else. Now, does it stay as well as the dyes that are in your fabrics? No, there are chemicals you can add to it that will make it behave that way. But I usually find that that is, is a costly venture. And for what I'm trying to do, maybe I don't need it. Maybe all I really wanted to do was write out my words with a Sharpie or a Micron and then go over the top of it with my embroidery floss. Again, it's as personal as you want it to be or not. That's up to you. So the one, well, let's see what else. Oh, we also have oil, um, oil sticks. They add a lot of color. They give you shimmer. Um, they give you a little bit of sparkle to your project. So that's another avenue that you can print on fabric with. Now, if you have other crafts that you like to do, like say scrapbooking, you can take some of your, your rubber stamps. If they've got an open area, that's a fantastic place to write your quilted information. You do need to make sure that you get what they call fabric, fabric dye, dyes specifically made for um, printing or stamping on fabric. I'm sorry, it's not printing, it's stamping. Um, Versacraft has a wonderful line, several different colors, and these are brand new. So we'll see how fun this is. But I just want to show you quick just how easy this is to do you know it's, it's not that i'm trying to teach you how to do rubber stamping because i'm not there are people who do it way better than i do but you're gonna load up your rubber stamp with your dye your ink pad whatever you want to call it that's made specifically for doing labels and apply it to the back of your rubber stamp then you're going to press your image down onto your fabric and when it comes away ta-da i now have the cutest little quilt label it's all set and ready to go so now all i have to do is add my information to who this is going to again you can add more color to it if you want to you can leave it plain if you want to whatever you want to do so to mom that's always a good one. To mom, made by. And Melissa. And we did this in April of 2021. And I don't think I wanna put any more than that on there. But as you can see, you can write right on your label. You're gonna to wanna to keep your freezer paper on your fabric until you're done writing. It gives it a little bit of stability and it helps you write on the weave of the fabric just a little bit easier. So leave that on there till you're all the way done. When you're done, you just peel it off. Now this is gonna to have to be heat set, but once it's heat set, then all I have to do is cut it to the proper size and then fold my edges under and I have the perfect little quilt label. It's just absolutely perfect. And with your rubber stamps, you can get it themed to whatever, whatever the occasion would happen to be or the likes are of the person that you're giving it to. I mean, some of these little ones, they don't have to be big. They can just sit down in the corner. Maybe it's for baseball or airplanes or boats or dinosaurs or whatever. But I'm sure that if you craft it all, you've got lots of this stuff hanging out at your house. So now, if I don't want to use my printer and I want to be able to make mine on my own and I don't, 
I'm not very artistic. So for me to sit down and draw something out, I don't have any rubber stamps. How am I going to get this made? I got to move that. Otherwise, I'm going to have rubber stamp ink all over my sweatshirt. <laughs> So now I'm going to bring this over. I hope I have so much stuff on the counter. This is so funny. There's just so many things for you to see. And don't worry if you miss something because I will link down below absolutely everything that I've put on here. And I apologize if this is hard to see, but this is a light box and crayon, uh, excuse me, coloring books are the perfect place to find pictures and designs that you can use as labels. And if you don't have a light box, don't worry, a window works perfect, but it gets a little hard to see because you have the freezer paper behind and then you have the fabric on top. So if you wanna see your lines a little better, uh, I highly recommend that you get yourself one or the other of them. Um, then the next thing, and I better get a piece over here. Then the next thing that you want to do is you just want to follow your lines. Now, whether you use a Sharpie or a fabric dye pen or a Pigma pen, that's up to you. And it, it, it will be dependent on how thick you want your lines to be. But then it's just a matter of following over the top of all of your lines with your pen and you can see them because you've got a light source behind them, whether it's a sunny window or a light box or what have you, it does not matter. Remember, whatever works for you and helps you get the project done. Oh, this is fun, you guys. I could sit here and color all day long. But as you can see, it's as simple as that. You take your crayon page, your coloring page, you put your fabric backed piece of fabric that you're gonna use for your label over the top. You draw out your design. And when your design is done, you end up with something like this. Now look at all this space over here for information, for special words, you know, to mom, Nancy, um, for Mother's Day 2021, um, you know, I, I think of Mother's Day because I think of the flowers. Um, this quilt is a funky four patch and it's made by Melissa, you know, just want you to know I love you, whatever, blah, 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 whatever you want to put on there. But look at all the information. Now, this here is just broken lines drawn on. And it can be gone over with embroidery floss. It might be exactly where I want to stitch the label down onto the quilt backing before I put it on the quilt. Um, choices are yours. They can be as decorative or as plain as you want them to be. Now, and I'm going to turn this light off because I'm hoping it'll be easier for you to see. Yeah, it is. Okay, good. Now, once my picture is colored and I have it the way that I want it, I want to put a few embellishments on. Now, there are no hard and fast rules to embellishments. These are just buttons. And I'm just popping a couple buttons on here. No big deal. Nothing special. Just going to add a few buttons to make it look kind of pretty. The thing you need to remember is any embellishment you add must be able to be laundered and it must be attached securely so that it doesn't come off in the laundering process. There. Now you get kind of a little bit of an idea of adding some embellishments, how it just kind of changes your whole your whole picture. And again, it can be as many or as few as you would like to put on there. You know, you're the maker. This is where you get to play. This is just kind of a fun little art project. And you know, if you got together with your friends on a Thursday night and you got yourself a good bottle of wine and you all sat down and made a whole bunch of labels all at one time, then you'd have a store of them that you could use throughout the year anytime you finish a project or a quilt. And you've had a lovely night with your friends and it's coloring. You can sit, you can talk, you can laugh, you can giggle, you can add stuff to it. Whatever you want to do. 
if you're going to quilt through the label, do not add any embellishments until after it's been quilted. Otherwise, the needle will shatter. You'll end up with a hole in your project. It'll destroy your embellishment and you won't be happy. So remember, don't add any embellishments until you're completely done with the quilting process. And at that point, maybe it's better to attach your label when your quilt is all finished. So there you have it for this week. This week, we're talking about labels and attaching labels to your project. I hope that this video inspired you to make a label or two or three or four. Get together with your friends. Give yourself a good reason to sit together, laugh, talk, and have a lovely, lovely time enjoying one another. That's all for today. Thanks for joining me. Bye for now.